Hi everyone, this is Leather Ass for StockSpoker.com. Uh, today we have a uh, exciting video where the six of us, um, we have Matt Matros who's Jack's up, uh, Sit and Go Man is Colin Marshman, Freedom 25 is Bryce, um, you know Stocks Trader, and myself, and Cottonseed. Um, so, should be an exciting uh, game here we're going to play. Um, kind of, uh, I'm not quite sure exactly what approach I'm going to be taking. Um, I might just play like a freaking maniac. I might, uh, I might play like a rock and let these guys sort of uh, come after each other. It should be pretty funny, or fun and funny nonetheless. It's interesting, we have a, an array of players here. We've got Bryce, he's probably going to raise every pot. I mean, what does he carry? He's made two million bucks in the last month and we're playing one, two. Um, Kyle's, you know, always aggressive. I don't know anything about Matt or Colin. And I know Nick's game reasonably well, but again, I, I just don't know what sort of style they're going to be using at this point. So, um, but, uh, uh, Colin raises on the uh, button, and I'm going to go ahead and three bet him up with uh, Ace Ten. Whoops, sorry about that. Trying to get the sounds off there, and then the table jumped. I haven't played on full tilt in <laughs> so long that I think it's. Uh, um, I'm not quite sure what the features of the site are anymore, but. Uh, had the table there jump up on me. 4-6 uh, offsuit. Uh, Kyle, obviously, a good aggressive uh, player is going to be defending his big blind, so it's not going to be profitable uh, for me to play there. Um, Mad makes kind of a smallish raise, and I'm going to go ahead and um, play my button here with my king-7 suit. I would be almost shocked if Nick doesn't squeeze this here. Well, he doesn't. So we flop in that draw, and you know what that means. All in, baby. <laughs> so uh, we'll see what goes on. If they all check it to me, I'm not quite sure what I do. I might make a little teaser bet in here if uh, Bryce checks to me. Make like a, like a $5 bet and see if somebody reacts. Um, but now that he uh, potted into me, I'm just going to go ahead and shove. Um, you know, I could get fancy schmancy on him and raise it, but I got my money in pretty bad there. So, but I got lucky. A little double up early. What do you know? <laughs> so, that's an example of all in right there. So, we're going to raise up with the uh, King Jack. Uh, we have a limper here. You know what I like to do to limpers. Even if they are good players, they're going to get punished. So limp full. This is certainly a play um, that's uh, very common in tournaments, you know, limping in, stuff like that. Uh, cash games, you don't really see good players doing that. And it's not like Colin isn't a good player. Uh, but uh, you don't see that going on. Uh, too much. It's probably just more or less is you know the game he's familiar with. I'd, if I was playing a tournament right now, you can only imagine the you know dumb stuff I'd be doing. So uh, uh, limping in, generally not uh, something you see in six max cash games. But uh, again, we, we've got like our, like I said, our attorney guys, our limit hold'em guys. Um, you know, Nick obviously, uh, Stock Trader, one of the best at, uh, at both, and then Kyle, also good at limit and sort of a monster at no limit, so looks like there's some uh, bluffing going on here. But yeah, I mean, everybody has their sort of strong suits, and you know, limping is not a uh, necessarily a bad play. I do see it sometimes at high stakes um, by some pretty good players. Uh, so, you know, this might be him setting an image, might be him being kind of crafty or, um, you know, so we'll just kind of see for right now. Um, one thing I'm happy about is to double up early like that because I have four buy-ins uh, 
worth of money because I don't keep any money in full tilt. So I had them transfer me four buy-ins worth um, that I borrowed, and uh, I was hoping that I didn't that I wouldn't go broke because we've got a reasonably long video, and I don't think you can get transfers in. Uh, Nick uh, going for the end of the gun length, that is just not, uh, like I said, something you see, I really think uh, these guys are just trying to play tricky. I really do. I don't think this is a bad poker necessarily. I think there's a little something going on um, because I, I know Nick's game pretty well. Uh, he I've never seen him limp, to be honest with you, uh, under the gun. So I'm kind of a little uh, interested to see what he has here. I wouldn't be surprised to see a check raise, but it folds. So it looks like he is just limp he he did just limp in with a uh, you know speculative sort of hand. So anyway, I find this also fun and interesting. <laughs> Seeing what these guys are doing, it doesn't look like anybody's going too crazy at this point. You know, I, obviously we want this to be a little more fun. We'd like it to be instructional too, but um, you know, if some of these guys want to play loose and wild because we're having fun, then uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see that too. I might start engaging uh, in that as well at some point. I'm not really sure, but like I said, I just kind of, um, you know, coordinating the whole thing. Uh, you know, I, I kind of more or less didn't get in a frame of mind for poker. Uh, and so I'm kind of getting back in that frame of mind right now because I was having a little uh, trouble with production issues uh, to get this going. But it's going to be exciting. We got a long, uh, we got a lot of hands to play, so it's going to be fun. Uh, six four suited, uh, raise under the gun. Uh, you know we have some aggressive players behind. Sometimes I'll uh, take a flop in position, but. Uh, the likelihood of getting squeezed, like he just re-raised. I mean, if I had a call, he, you can imagine, he's going to be re-raising a lot there, regardless of his hand. And wow, would I like my cards back right now. <laughs> would have flopped the burger. So, uh, Colin just leads right into the re-raiser pre-flop. And it looks like it's going to work. Um, Interesting, I, you know, he may have had a set there um, looking to get raised. Uh, he may also just be kind of uh, feeling out his nines. Um, that's sort of the range of hands I'd put him on. Um, and Queen Jack is pretty marginal, and we got some aggressive guys behind us. I don't think this is the type of hand I uh, should be raising this from up front. disable my chat on full tilt because I haven't played there in forever so now I get to chat today so that's pretty fun. So maybe I can rib these guys a little bit. So look at stocks putting a little move there. Maybe out of hand who knows. We'll have to wait. Um, I'll have to wait and see there. Oops. So I was, I was figuring Bryce would play pretty aggressive, um, but then he showed up with a set on me. On the one hand, luckily I was able to suck out, but. Uh, you know, I'm expecting to see some pretty aggressive play by him. So this is a hand he might get involved here. I, I might three about this. Uh, to just let him know, you know, I'm coming after him a little bit. Um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to 
I'm going to go ahead and make it uh, 22. So this is, you know, an aggressive line. Um, and now I'm going to do some. I'm going to let him try to bluff. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and play this for stacks. And it just doesn't hit a lot of uh, what he could possibly have. And so now the queen hit. Um, you know, I could have bet, but there wasn't a whole lot that can call me. Um, now that the queen hit, uh, I'm going to again check and call. Although I might check raise the win. Uh, four spades on the turn. I, I, you know, I might have checked raise on there just thinking he might put me on the bluff. And now that uh, he's checked all these times, I'm going to go ahead and try to get a little value bet in here. And so uh, that paid off. Not quite sure what he had. Uh, I guess we can look on this last hand feature. He had pocket tens. So I gave him, you know, the trade off was I gave him some shots at a two outer. But the second at the, uh, you know, if I bet that out, he's going to fold his pocket tens. And, and I was able to get uh, 30 extra bucks there. And also, if he had a hand like ace jack, I can check call down, um, you know, and, and, uh, it's, you know, maybe maybe get him to bluff off his whole stack. So, you know, I don't know how aggressive he is at this point. I don't don't know if he's capable of that. But keeping in mind that I've got to think guys are going to be running some bluffs here, uh, I've got to think that that might not be a bad option. Now that is a risky option because I'm also not leading out and getting my information. Now, see if I if I lead out there, he raises. I might be able to make a big fold, putting him on a hand like king, queen, ace, king. Uh, but, so that part is is sort of a negative. That's sort of a risk I'm willing to take against an aggressive player. Now, I don't know if uh, Matt is a necessarily aggressive player because I've never played him before, but I was assuming that <clears throat> aggression might sort of play a role in guys thinking these days <laughs> on, on this table. So. You know, I chose to take maybe a, a higher variance play, but I think a more positive EV play than to bet out uh, there. So that was my logic behind there. I, you know, I wouldn't always uh, play it that way, but it seemed to make sense there. So I've raised my raise jack five offsuit is obviously garbage. Uh, I think, you know, we have one table. I, I don't really see any reason to get the uh, poker ace involved at this point. Maybe when I, maybe uh, towards the end I might, I might get it going and uh, get the import going on the poker tracker and get some numbers on these. But at one table, you know, I ought to be able to observe what's going on and, um, you know, make some reasonable plays and reads based on that. So now there's Bryce re-raises, and now Kyle, four bets. I, I think his range is still pretty wide here. Uh, Bryce has been pretty active, um, re-raising a lot. I think Kyle could possibly be sending, trying to send him a message with, um, not necessarily sending a message, but maybe more or less just trying to re-steal. You know, he's investing 60 to win approximately 30 in the pot. So I think a steal is part of his range. I also think, of course, he could have aces or, you know, a hand like that, kings, ace-king. So I think a big hand is certainly part of his range as well. Um, so Stock said, me out. Nine times two, I'm certainly not going to fold at this point. Only 15 more. Um, I have a hand that definitely plays well. Um, and I don't think four betting is good because it, it is a hand that can play well. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, take a flop. Uh, I did flop a gut shot. Um, if I had maybe a backdoor flush, certainly if I had a flush draw, I would shove on him. Also, if I had a read on him being... Um, you know, more of a liberal three-better. 
I don't think he's necessarily a uh, liberal three better. Uh, I think he is three better range is still reasonably tight, and no need to get too out of hand here. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make a fold. If I had a backdoor flush, I think I would peel here. Um, just something to kind of go along with my gut shot. Um, but, you know, and that would give me some good semi-bluffing opportunities if, like, the eight of hearts hit on the turn. Uh, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I, I will shove there on really aggressive players, you know, because I usually just, like, once I get through that by an aggressive player in that sort of, um, you know, button stealing situation, um, I usually shove, you know, gut shots, all that stuff, uh, sort of anything that is interesting on the flop. Um, but I don't view him as being that aggressive at this point. So, uh, Queen A2 here, yeah, I'm just going to, obviously this is a beautiful flop uh, with the flush draw on top pair. And so I was just going to bet it basically, you know, slightly to protect my hand, but mostly to build a pot because, you know, I have a really strong hand. If I get action, I'm going to t um, tend to be behind sometimes at that point, but uh, I certainly have plenty of opportunity to catch up. So, uh, you know, more than happy to play for stacks if uh, he would have... Uh, you know, put some action in. I would have more than likely so. So this is another four bet by Kyle. So that's two four bets um, in one orbit. So you know, like I said, you know, he, of course he may have had aces and kings both times, but reality is he probably doesn't. So looks like uh, Kyle's full crap. <laughs> Uh, he's, I think he's a uh, show in here, and uh, he's going to fold. Yeah, I, uh, you know, probably don't love his four bet um, as a bluff because, you know, Nick's MO is not that he's, you know, an overly aggressive player. And, uh, you know, Kyle may have had his reasons, and, and maybe his reasons sense and there for reasons I can't think of at the moment, but uh, I don't think Nick is the type of guy you necessarily need to get carried away with and uh, and need to run four bet bluffs. I just don't think um, he's going to be three betting you uh, too liberally in the long run. So, you know, but I could be wrong. He may be loosening up for this uh, game, and if that's the case, I like his four bet because he's going to send me a message going, you know, if you're going to three bet me, you're going to have to fear the four bet because it's going to be common, you know, one time out of three or whatever. So, you know, if that's the case, I uh, I don't mind this four bet at all. So not a whole lot of chat going on. I'm going to try to... Uh, get it to where it's just chat down at the bottom left. I don't know if that's a, a possibility. Uh, it may not be. So I'm going to uh, take a look at that more. Um, I just think <laughs> you <laughs> cash punks ain't got no game. <laughs> oh, call him the crack up. Oh, okay, there's a way of doing it. Okay, so now we should have just uh, the chat down at the bottom. We don't need to have a rundown of the action. I just want to see what these these guys are saying. I, I better get involved here with <laughs> the chat. I don't. I, <laughs> I never. Uh, I never chat, and you know, we only have one table, and uh, seems like, you know, <laughs> seems fun to <laughs> seems fun to rib these guys a little bit. This is a lot of fun. I'll, I will say it. I hope you guys are enjoying these this video. It's it's uh, pretty fun to.
obviously with all these guys, you know, we work together. I mean, you know, I'll be on the site and, you know, talk to each other all day. It's nice to get in there and try to uh, rip each other apart here. Nick's giving them crap because tournaments generally, you know, you've only got like 20 blinds. Uh, you know, it's a lot of all in or nothing. Um, you know, these 100 blinds are really not that deep of stacks by cash game standards. Um, but for these guys um, that are not used to playing, this is this has got to seem like really deep stacks. You know, a lot of like decisions and stuff. <laughs> You know they make they make uh, um, decisions in a in a different sort of uh, way that makes them amazing. But um, these aren't the type of decisions they're used to the making. So it's a three seven suited. Uh, I maybe could have called on the button, um, but my initial thought was that it could get squeezed very easily because it's just sort of a weakish looking min raise, and I just call the min raise. So. Um, and it might have been better to three bet it. So these guys are just really needling each other right now. Um, and I'm going to be able to fold to the push. 
Um, but I just think Bryce is, is playing pretty loose, and uh, he may be getting a little frustrated if people come over the top of him, so he may shove here and um, with something marginal that I'm hoping he'll fold. And then I'll have to fold, but um, it's a play I make sometimes when there's a raise on the button uh, by a guy that's been raising a lot, and then a loose guy three bets him. Uh, I just think his range is not, neither of their ranges are all that great. And when you four bet, you really put the pressure on them to have a hand. Um, you know, they can't, I would say, if they were on you, maybe they could shove ace queen suited. Um, but there's just not much else they can shove. Um, there's not a whole lot of hands they can shove. You know, ace king maybe just sticks the rest of his money and maybe queens are better. But even ace king and queens is not thrilled about it. It's pretty much kings and aces the only thing that's beating you into the pot. Um, especially since I haven't four bet him yet. I just felt like it was a good time to do it and, you know, it worked out there so it probably looked cool and whatever. But, um, you know, that play is certainly <laughs> costing money at times too. But, uh, you know, it just felt right, right there. And that's a lot of how I play is, you know, I'm, I'm not a numbers genius. I'm not Nick. I'm not Bryce. Um, you know, I play intuitively. Uh, I do hang around these guys because, uh, well, not, this isn't obviously the reason I hang around them, but I do kind of hang around these guys and sort of leech off them numbers wise and, you know, be like, hey, what do you think of this play? Can you, would you mind, you know, if you had some time running the math? And it's sort of mutually beneficial because I'll have these good ideas for plays and then they will run the math on them. So I sort of get the math out of them and they get some, you know, tricky or interesting plays they may not have come up with on their own uh, for me. So it's sort of, uh, you know, it's it's sort of uh, mutually beneficial. So uh, another uh, friend of mine, um, who you've probably all heard about my blogs, his name is Rob. He goes by LA's and my friend, because I always refer to him as my friend from New York. Um, he's an absolute genius with uh, numbers, so I uh, talk to him a lot about stuff like that. And we have a very good um, rapport where we're going back and forth where, you know, we'll come up with plays together and then run the math, and it's kind of fun and stuff. So, uh, um, again, I, you know, I'm, I'm more of the intuitive type player. I just don't, you know, I'm pretty good at quick math, but solving complex problems and just doing this deep math at some of, uh, you know, poker stove, stuff like that, that uh, poker requires, I'm just not really good at. So, um, you know, I would say my strength is more uh, playing intuitively. So this is a testament to just what a load of crap Kyle must have been on that one to fold that. I mean, he was, there wasn't much money left to put in. He was clearly three betting me light. So we'll keep that in mind. Um, a 10 9 two, I'm going to go ahead and open here. And now we're deep enough so if he raises, I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, play the pot. But uh, we flop two pair are very vulnerable, though. Uh, but either way, I think I'm going to have to get it in with how aggressive Nick's been playing. I mean, if he flopped, out flop me, then so be it. But I, I was sort of expecting a raise there. Um, it wouldn't be a bad time for him to raise it there because there's just not a whole lot of hands that I want to put my money in. I mean, if I have aces there uh, and he raises me, I'm probably just going to have to chuck the hand. I mean, not much I'm beating there. Um, and so sometimes it's not a bad type of flop just to raise a guy, especially an under-the-gun raiser whose range is going to be a lot of pocket pairs and, you know, some big pairs and ace-king and stuff like that that just can't continue on that sort of flop. So so I want to actually go back and try to find this hand that uh, Nick and him played. They played a big pot with, uh, let me get it back here. Uh, uh, Bryce made a really good value bet on the river there. Um, I, I kind of was talking and missed the action a little bit. 
but uh, it looked like a good play by Bryce. <laughs> so Nick is raving a lot now. He's uh, he's even joking. He's we're supposed to be looking at your cards. <laughs> um, and I'm just gonna raise up a seven suited. You know, I'm gonna get raised in three bet a lot. Um, and a, on a flop like this with a guy who's uh, playing aggressive, I'm just going to check and fold. Uh, I just don't expect him to fold very often. And, you know, he can make his $12 bet here, and I'm just going to give it to him. <laughs> oh, there's that $12 bet. How old do I know is his game? <laughs> Um, so ace four off suit, definitely junk. So we can scroll scroll through this chat here. Wow, so Bryce uh, re-raised again. I'm actually going to call here, and uh, I'm getting pretty good odds. Everyone's deep. I don't expect Sit and Go Man's going to have enough of a range to four bet here, especially after my scary call, which um, is going to maybe freeze him up a little bit. Uh, if Bryce checks, I might fire here. I, in fact, I think I am. This board is not going to hit a whole lot, and my call looks really scary. It looks like uh, you know I have a hand like pocket queens or something. So, you know, I don't think they're going to be calling with much on that flop, considering, you know, when I, when I call raise and raise is cold, uh, fives is, I'm very rarely ever going to call with a hand like that. So, uh, you know, on a board like that, once, once the guy I was really worried about, which is Bryce, checks, um, yeah, the only thing I'm worried about, because I, I know Bryce isn't going to have a hand, um, you know, rarely, unless you flop like top set or something. And uh, Colin, I'm just worried about him, you know, flopping a set or, or, you know, a straight or something with, like, his pseudo connector middle pair. Um, but, again, his range is so wide that I can't worry about stuff like that. And, you know, he's going to need at least top pair to continue uh, with the way I played that hand. So, you know, it's more or less just uh, trying to... Try to take the line that it looks like I took and make it more scary. Or, you know, just, just sort of confirm the scary line that I took. So, more or less using the line I took to my advantage. This looks like Matt's tired of getting re-raised. <laughs> just typed in the chat that we're going to go 45 minutes and we're going to break and then go to part two. So this is a really good uh, table. I mean, to be honest with you. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, everyone's sort of playing kind of reckless. So uh, this is, uh, if the cards fall right, pretty easy money. <laughs> But only because I'm being a party pooper and just trying to take their money and not not playing like a crazy guy. I, I will admit I'm definitely playing a little lucid. I, I wouldn't always call it the pocket fives there, and, but I'm not exactly. You know, I'm like the I'm like the guy at the party that had like two beers. <laughs> I, I wasn't quite the sober guy, but I wasn't uh, I wasn't wasted either. And, you know, I'm seeing some waster play <laughs> play here if we're going to use it in uh, drinking terms. Okay, Colin, you guys mind if I leave the table and rebuy us 45 bucks? <laughs> That's good. He has a sense of humor. He's teasing himself. But again, I may get a little more frisky before the end. Uh, I guess was a pretty liberal uh, for a bit. 
Um, with the nine two, I'm going to play it a little tricky in this call. Um, oh wow, <laughs> flop quads here. So I'm, I'm going to definitely slow play this a little bit. Uh, I don't see a whole lot of value in raising the flop. Um, and now I check, I'm just going to check it still. Maybe he'll we'll hit a two out or something if he has like sevens. And it looks like he's just giving it to me, so that's kind of unfortunate. I don't know why he wouldn't bet that um, flop. So I'm going to do something here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and over bet it and try to get some value from this. I don't really see how else he's going to. Um, he's going to just pay off a small bet. I mean, he can't have much here. So maybe if I over bet it, um, it can represent something. It might be a little fishy, and maybe he'll look me up. So he's thinking about it. <laughs> he's, he's requesting time. This is great. Poor leather ass, a hundred bucks. <laughs> this is this is funny. Oh, I timed out. I wish I could show somehow. <laughs> Preaching to the choir. You know all about. <laughs> that's uh, that's just what he does, you know. All in, in tournaments, it's kind of exciting. I, I like playing tournaments. So I'm interested to hear the commentary on the hundred dollar over bet. Um. You know, I don't know what he, I, I'd be interested to see what he was thinking. I mean, obviously he knows I'm either, it's a stone cold bluff, or I've got, you know, a full house or quads or something crazy. So the deuce is I chose to just call. Um, and uh, try to flop a set, and now he overpots it. Um, you know, I'm just going to give it to him. I mean, I could put him a call here and try to take it away later. Maybe try to hit a two, but <coughs> that's a little optimistic. Mostly, I'm just calling to try to flop a set there. So at the eight, I'm going to go ahead and open and steal the blind blinds. Unfortunately, you want to get in there with your pocket pairs. Pairs are the ultimate weapon in the woman holding. <laughs> That's what my friend uh, Rob likes to say. We, you know, I, sometimes I debate whether, you know, under the gun and full ring, if I should play a pocket pair, if I should just fold it like small pairs. And he's just like, Dusty, you've got to play your pairs. Pairs, a set is the ultimate weapon in the woman holding. <laughs> And so he always tells me that, so he makes me play the pairs. So, uh, I do. Problem is you don't hit that set that often. And then when you do, it feels like you never get paid. <laughs> so I got a little action here. Alright, so another pair. Pretty amazing, three in one orbit. I just think I'm a net or something, just folding right away. I guess I am a net for this game. And I'm going to go ahead and raise him up here. This, this bet just seems weak to me, so I'm going to come after him a little bit. Um, 
been in the right position. I don't. Uh, I kind of don't allow. <laughs> uh, sometimes I min three bet. Sometimes I make a raise. Kind of all depends on my mood, really. Uh, so let's go ahead and just repot him up again. We're, we're going to come after him see if. You know, I've got to think my, I'm going to have a pretty good strength in playing some deep stack where he may be a little more uncomfortable. Again, I don't know his, his game. So um, we're just going to come after him and keep, keep the heat on. And hopefully uh, hopefully he calls and I hit a four on the turn. <laughs> That's honestly what I'm hoping for. And he, but this would be a six shove. Oh, boy. I could shove it here. I mean, he's going to have to have a freaking monster to call when we're this deep. Oh, boy. No, I don't, I don't think that's the best idea. I'm just going to give it to him. That would probably be a little optimistic. Uh, again, though, you know, it's hard to say what he would be raising me with there. Um, you know, there's not, I mean, unless he fought the set, he really can't like his hand that much when I come back over the top all in. And with that gut shot and the backdoor flush draw, um, you know, I suppose aces stacks off if I shove. And I suppose queens probably does, or excuse me, kings. Queens, he's got a full of queens. So aces, kings, and a set. Maybe I should have shoved. I can't imagine his ranges. Aces, kings, are set. I mean, could he maybe look me up with queens or ace, jack? I don't know. It would be bad if he did, I think. Unless he has a view of me of being extremely loose. But I don't see where he'd get that from. I mean, I've been reasonably loose at this point, but nothing crazy. I mean, definitely not even the top three of these guys at the table so far, so. <laughs> Tough to steal this guy's blinds, yeah. I think that's what he was, uh, I think he was talking about me. I'm kind of hating myself now for not showing the, uh, Oh my gosh. Oh, that's so sick. Wow, what a suck out. Okay, so I think that's going to end part one, and uh, yeah, stop now. We'll see you guys at part two.